Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Hildeberg's Church here on the Wirral. Um, before we have our service this morning, I'd just like to bring your attention, I'm sure you all know that the sad death of Prince Philip. Um, I'd like to read a prayer and we'll have a minute's silence. God of our lives, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for his love of our country and for the devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us, therefore, rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. And we say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen and our colleagues for, this, for today the second sunday of easter almighty father you have given your only son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in purest of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he'd said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The name Doubting Thomas resonates through history. We still use that term today when someone remains sceptical about something until they see physical proof of its reality. One of the original 12 disciples to be called by Jesus, Thomas was also known as the twin, although there's no mention of a sibling. His name comes from a Hebrew root, Taham, which means paired or twin. And several times in John's Gospel, he's referred to as Didymus, a Greek nickname for twin. To have had a nickname perhaps shows that he was well thought of and much loved by his companions. His scepticism is recorded several times in the Bible. For example, earlier on in John's Gospel, Jesus is preparing the disciples for what will happen when he dies. Jesus tells them, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas responds, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? 
His words seem to indicate a slight sense of panic as his need for physical proof of things is turned upside down. On the one hand, we could see his scepticism as indicating that he may be drifting away, his faith slowly dissolving until he has nothing left to keep him grounded. On the other hand, his inquiring mind may indicate a deep thinker, a person with lots of questions, who doesn't just accept things, but wants answers. He's followed Jesus almost from the beginning and gone through the good and the bad times. Remember that this incident takes place only a week after the crucifixion and minds must have been in turmoil as this new beginning gradually unfolds. The other disciples have just received the Holy Spirit and they must have felt confusion but also a great fulfillment and confidence to come out of that locked house and into the community to spread the good news. Thomas may have felt as though he was apart from them, separated because of his doubt. But Thomas is stuck, almost like a nervous swimmer, sitting at the poolside, feet dangling in the water, watching everyone else having a great time splashing about, but stuck, uncertain and a bit scared. This reminded me of the parable of the lost sheep, Recently, I've been watching a television program following the lives of people in the lakes and the Yorkshire Dales through the seasons. We saw Herdwick sheep being brought down from the fells by a Lake District farmer, with the exception of one sheep, that had got stuck on a rocky edge and couldn't go up or get down. It was bleating in panic because it didn't know what to do. With the help of a neighbor, this lost sheep was lowered by rope to safe ground and joined the rest of the flock. The dedication of the farmers went far beyond money. They could have left the sheep there, but they went back out as the mist was coming in over the fells to bring that sheep back home safe and sound. In our reading, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is expressing love and pastoral care to Thomas by appearing again when he knows he'll be in the house. He can't let this sheep become lost, and so he goes back to rescue him. Thomas's response to Jesus, providing him with the proof he's asked for, is a great declaration, a recognition of the deity of Jesus, my Lord and my God, opens the floodgates of his mind and heart, strengthening his faith and reassuring him. As I said at the beginning, we can all identify with Thomas, an ordinary man living in extraordinary times. But Thomas's words, as he falls at the feet of Jesus, are a crowning confessional, witnessing a faith that doesn't need or demand proof. As Jesus said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Thinking about the comparison I made earlier between Thomas and a nervous swimmer, I'd like to end with part of the poem All at Sea by Brian Draper. As I began to sink, I closed my eyes, but could feel your presence wrapped like water around me. I was in deep, but when I hit the bottom, you wrapped me tighter still and whispered, I was there all along. We'll stand to affirm our faith. Please stand. We say together, although he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death of the cross. Therefore, God has risen him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Knowing that the risen Christ is here among us, let us pray in his name for the church and for the world. 
Father, we pray for your blessing on every group of Christians worshipping today all over the world. And we pray, Lord, for all who doubt your truth. We pray that our hearts may be set ablaze with love and that we may walk as children of light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all the areas of your world which are torn apart by hatred and violence, famine, disease, or religious differences. Particularly remembering our linked parish of Openyani in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We pray for an end to war and a deeper commitment to peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our communities and particularly for the people who will be opening shops and businesses tomorrow. Lord, we thank you for them. Father, we pray for the staff and pupils of our church school of Holy Trinity and for their families. We thank you for the gift of learning that opens up your world to us through study and discovery. We remember, Lord, our emergency services and pray for the well-being of our lifeboat crew and staff that they may be protected under your strong wings, whatever the situation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who wake up to the prospect of another day filled with pain. For those who long for someone to spend time with them, enjoying their company, and we pray for sight that notices needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family at this time. We pray for all who mourn and for those they love and miss. Commending all who have died to the everlasting arms of the God of love, in whom there is life in all its fullness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And in a few moments of silent prayer, Lord, we bring our thoughts to you. Father, with joy in our hearts, we thank you for the new life opened up to us through Jesus, our Redeemer. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jill. Let us stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share a sign of peace from a distance. Pour upon the poverty of our love and the weakness of our praise the transforming fire of your presence. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful heart the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as a way obey his command, 
Send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine are poured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. And when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us into your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours. O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving and we say together most merciful lord your love compels us to come in our hands are unclean our hearts are unprepared we are not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table but you lord the god of our salvation and share your bread with sinners so cleanse us and feed us with the precious body and blood of your son that we may live in him and we live in him, that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Body of Christ broken for me. Blood of Christ shed for me.
Let us pray. Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life, and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin, and rise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we say the post-communion prayer together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out into the power of your Spirit to live in words your praise and glory. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good word to do his will, working in you that is, which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones this day and forevermore. Amen. So let us go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.